Pete Gearson and Scott Schrader here at the Galen Center. We just watched USC defeat Long Beach State 75-65, to but we're, what we're really here for is to talk USC football. Big news, of course, coming out of Heritage Hall this week. Multiple coaches will not be back with the program next year. Scott, some of them were surprising, some of them were more anticipated than others. What did you think of Black Tuesday, as they're calling it? Yeah. Well, you know, we, we kind of knew when they decided to keep Clay that there were going to be some big time changes. Clay even said there were going to be some, some big changes. So we expected significant coaching changes. And so I, I, I think I was a little surprised by, by a few of them um, that stayed, maybe one that stayed or a couple that left. I thought T. Martin was going to stay. Yeah. I thought he would remain as the wide receivers coach. Uh, outstanding person, out, really bright football guy. You know, however things worked out or didn't work out as an offensive coordinator, to me was it was really not a big issue. Yeah. Very valuable, very valuable coach and, and he, person. I feel like he was going to accept his new role as just the wide receivers coach and, and understood that the play calling abilities were not going to be in his I hands. I felt like anymore. he was too. He, he was, it, yeah. You, you even talked to him I did. recently. Like, like, as recent as last week, and mm -hmm. he said he's excited to go out and recruit. He's excited to work. I mean, yep. how can you not be excited to work with guys like Amon Ross St. Brown, Michael Pittman, who now, by the way, is confirmed coming back. Tyler Bonds is coming back. Yeah. Brew McCoy is very those likely going to be yeah, here. Those are guys he talked about, not Brew McCoy, because he can't talk about yeah, recruits. Yeah, of course. But, um, I, I mean, fellas, Jones, all these guys are coming yeah. back. And no, he was a, he a was, fun he group was to general, teach. I could feel it. I mean, I was like, wow, he really uh, is looking forward to coming back. So that surprised me. Kenichi Daisy surprised me. Um, yeah, you know, Udeze is, is a big time recruiter too, and you know and, there was there was a, you know he, there was just something going on with him and Clancy that that just never clicked. Yep. So you know Clancy stayed, so it was kind of like you know I don't I'm not sure that the KU was going to be happy and with the same role anyway uh, that that he had up up in the box. He wanted to be down with his players, engaging with them, going you know drawing up plays and, and just kind of going over what, what they may have done not done right in the football game or what they need to change so um you know i, th I think ronnie bradford uh, you know i think it was we pretty much knew he was probably not going to come back no matter what well, why did you think that well you know it's just uh, maybe unfairly but his 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 defensive backs didn't look like they developed yeah and now he didn't have many to develop and they were either. injured all season long you're right but they so, kind of regressed this year it seemed you know like. but i think it was a bigger issue there too guys were were, were not listening to him um, and, and I'm not going to blame him for this. I think this was just something that was present on the football team. Um, you know, like Jack Jones just dismissed everything he ever said. Um, this, the younger guys were, were buying in. Right? And, and so, but, you know, sometimes you have to change. You know, yep. so that wasn't working. Uh, Brian Ellis moved on to be the offensive coordinator with Tyson Helton at Western Kentucky. Bright, bright, bright young coach. Uh, I, I think he's going to do some really big things. So. Um, so now we're, we're, we're kind of, Kerry Colbert moved to, to receivers, likely. So, yeah. you know, we're, they're looking for an offensive coordinator first. You know, so, you know, I think with T being gone and, and Clay staying, I think they're really going to go after a big-time offensive coordinator. The name we're hearing everywhere except at USC. Nobody here has seen him. Everybody else well, claims he's been on rumors campus. That people, six different rumors came out the other day. They're but all those him, people but... are sitting in their living room in, like, Kentucky and Fontana. Yeah. So they don't know what's No going one on. really knows if, if Clint, Cliff Kingsbury's yeah. been on campus or not. And I've heard that he's getting offers, as soon as he got fired from Texas Tech, that he was getting offers from NFL teams. The offers were in place. Yeah. So we'll have to see if, if those were bigger financially so or bigger He may be hired. I mean, we're just, we just haven't seen him on campus. Yeah. The USC coaching staff, the people that we know, that we've talked to, um, you know, they they – don't know what's going on either. And apparently you were telling me so Lynn the, Swan doesn't really tell him many yeah, people. Yeah. He has he a does, small circle of people that he chats correct. with. Correct, and that's we, fine. You know, but but for all these people that think they know what's going on, if people do know what's going on, it's coming from people that know Cliff Kingsbury. You know, it, people, it, yeah. you know, because it's not coming from here. Um, so now we're dealing with, with that and, and, and filling positions. Uh, Mike Sanford, who was the head coach at West Kentucky, could be a candidate to be the running backs coach. Um, is Tim Drevno going to stay on offensive line? Then you Drevno think? will stay at offensive line. Okay. I, I, I mean, he's out recruiting right now. He's telling people that. Um, so yeah, he'll, he'll remain. So, so right will. now we're wondering how is it going to impact recruiting? Exactly. And you know, defensive line wise, you know, you have Drake Jackson from Centennial, who one of the main reasons they were seriously considering, or maybe USC was still out in front for him through all this madness that was going on here during the football season, was because of Kenichi Udaze. So. 
they're now, he's taken his official visit this weekend and they're waiting to hear what USC has to tell them. I'm not sure what they're going to tell them, but if they do, we'll know. <laughs> because they'll they'll tell us. Will T. Martin's departure affect recruiting? Because he's in the past I, been I, a big time recruiter. He kind of slowed down a little bit with recruiting. It recently. might, you know. But, it's, it, but I don't think so. You know, you have Brew McCoy, who's developed a relationship with him for the last three years. Um, Brew's dream is to come to USC. USC is going to have to do a monumental f up to not get him, but they still could. There's time to, to screw it up. Never but know. Uh, you know, so I, I think they're going to. They, they, I think they still have, they're probably going to get all the receivers they want. Yeah, um, I, I think maybe maybe they ought to go all in for a speedy receiver. Uh, you know, they're bringing Puka Nakua, who was a, a faster guy, so that might be their guy. But I think they should have also gone after maybe a track speed guy as, as well. So, um, so now we'll, we're looking at you know linebackers are safe. You know, Johnny Nansen's coming back. The DBs, you know, the DBs that, that were being recruited like Ronnie Bradford. So I I, I don't think they're upset, but. I'm hearing that some of the parents and the kids are upset with the way USC handled this yeah. by having these coaches go into the homes Sunday night of, of, all, of all these kids and take photographs and put them on Twitter. And USC didn't put them on Twitter, but they you know, take photos. You know that's where they're going to go. So that's a bad look. And the coaches were gone the next day. And what, who's, was it Chris Steele tweeting on Instagram about, like, hey, these guys were, you know, pick the school and the, and the program. His dad. It was, it was dad. Yeah. Pick the school, pick the program. Worry about the connections, and don't always worry about the coaches because you never know. If, you know they could be gone the next day. But that is exceptionally good advice. You know the coaches got to matter, and and but you can't ultimately choose the school for the coach because you know even when Pete Carroll was here, you know he was a big draw, but you know Pete could be gone. I remember at the Army All America Bowl one year, during practices, it was announced that Pete was leaving for the Seahawks, and and. He was such a big draw for the kids. There were kids crying that I was talking to that, that he was leaving. So um, I don't think there's anybody on this staff that has that kind of an impact on, on kids. It may not, maybe not crying, but it seems like every single player is yeah. so behind Clay Helton. That would, uh, These guys, they, they keep saying, I don't know if you see on social media, they keep saying CC, and they're not telling us what that means. They're not telling the public what that means, but I'm pretty sure it means Coach, Kel Coach Clay, and I'm pretty sure – they all want him back. Yeah. Well, they do. And, and these He's recruits, a players coach. And these recruits and their families have this, I'm telling you, it's a strong, strong, strong conviction uh, for, for Clay Helton. They, they, they think that highly of him. So, What about Chris Steele? He, we actually saw him here on Sunday, was it, at a, at a USC uh, basketball game or, or, the, or last week? Yeah. Last About a week ago, mm -hmm. he was checking out the basketball game here. Yeah, he was with Gavin. At the Galen Center. Uh, any updates on him? or? You know, I think he's going to wait and, and see, you know, you know, if they hire Dante Williams or a Demetrius Martin, or they hire a DB's coach that he like is looking at, going, "Wow!" I mean, I I think they get Chris. You know, um, so there's a lot that needs to, to play out in the next couple of weeks, and we just don't know how it's going to go. But now they have official visits this weekend, next weekend, and the weekend after, and then the signing day is December 19th. And right now, USC's recruiting class isn't one of the highly ranked ones no. in the nation. But USC kind of has a tradition of closing at the end and, and yeah. snatching guys at the last minute. Do you see that happening? They have a smaller number of committed players right now than, than a lot of the schools. I, I, I think if things go the way they could likely go, they'll finish with a very, very solid recruiting class. Top 10 easily. So, you know, that is good enough. And, and move on. You know, coaching changes. Hopefully have a good season. The 2020 class is, is the big prize. Yep. What about Cliff Kingsbury? Because everyone's obsessed with talking about him. We just talked about him, but do you think his air raid style offense that he did with, you know, Johnny Manziel and a Baker Mayfield will work with JT Daniels? We don't know. You know, JT's been been groomed to play in a pro style offense, but I mean, JT's a beautiful distributor of football. Yeah. So especially against Notre and he's Dame. so bright. So I I don't think I've talked to his dad, and this would be a positive hire as far as Dan, JT is concerned. Um, talked to some some a parent of a five star offensive player who said my kid would be sprinting to USC if they hired Cliff Kingsbury. Really? So, wow. you know, so it would be a very popular hire. And USC has the receivers and, and the, the playmakers to, to make it work. Velas Jones would probably be the happiest guy in Southern California if they got Cliff Kingsbury. So anyway, we're approaching our 10-minute mark here on the video, and we're going to get out of here. We'll be back here at the Galen Center on Saturday. Yep, big game against Nevada. five Nevada guys come out. Nevada Wolfpack, very talented. 
advanced and veteran team. And USC's looking better. I don't know if they'll be able to defeat the Wolfpack because yeah. they're still kind of progressing. Kevin Porter Jr. was injured tonight. USC's right. and star freshman. And I just saw a mock draft. He's supposed to go ninth overall. In the, I mean, not supposed to, but they're projecting he looks good. him Might to go he, top 10 overall. Yeah, he's like impressive. He can, yeah, he, he, Fun to watch. Someone was telling me he's the, what, probably the best player USC's had since DeMar DeRozan, but there the difference was DeRozan couldn't really shoot when he was here. Right, this guy KPJ can. can. So very, very entertaining basketball guys here if you can come out on Saturday. But All right. the recruiting news, the Check out TrojanInsider.com. We've got everything you need on our website. We have a $1 trial right now, 30 days, one buck. Yep. It. And Trust me. Subscribe to Scott's YouTube channel and, and everything. He'll be updating on Twitter. But it's crazy times here at USC, and we never know when the latest news is coming out. Right. Pete and I will get together again, and we'll talk. We'll give another update on the coaching situation. All